And then, you know, more than 40 have Begin died in the widening Northeast devastation uh, for uh, Ida. From Hurricane Ida. The picture is still coming in. This is a storm that swept across more than a thousand miles of this country. And so far, at least 58 people have died as a result of Ida, including 45 in the Northeast, 13 in the South. What happened was record rainfall caused record flooding, catching many people by surprise in their cars and in their homes. In Louisiana, where the storm made landfall, the power. I was working at the only bar in my town in PA and we had a pretty decent flooding and the power loss and my boss and our boss kept calling to make sure we were working. Worst part, people actually came in like nothing was happening. Where the f was your boss? Did he evacuate? Remember when the East Coast so he evacuated because like, whoa, wind I'm wind not going to be there because the there's East floods, dude. But he was like calling in to make sure that you guys were still working. That's nice. Tech. Here, this is what happened to Louisiana, specifically Grand Isle. Obviously, that's uh, the worst impacted because... You know, this was, uh, 40% of the buildings were destroyed in the area. Uh, it, it's, it's a f island kind of, so, and it directly took the hurricane head on. Power is still out for hundreds of thousands of people. And that means shortages of food, of water, and of fuel. President Biden will visit the area later today, but let's go first to our Mola Lange, who is in hard-hit Wayne, New Jersey. Mola, good morning to you. I was watching rescues all day yesterday on local news. What do you see in this morning? Well, good morning. Yeah, flooding is still a concern as some of the lower rivers in the area continue to rise, including the Passaic River behind me here. But one person was killed when they were swept away in floodwaters not too far from here. And the search is being ramped up for two college. Yeah, conservatives look to this and go, oh, well, they actually weren't killed by the flooding. They were killed because, you know, they got uh, hit in the head. And it's actually like a head collision from a rock. You know, anything to uh, move away from the actual point. Students whose car may have gotten pulled into this river. Good morning, right now. Across the Northeast, first responders rescue those in danger from rising tides and powerful floods. In New Jersey, this police officer saved a man stuck in his submerged car. Boats went house to house in Delaware and Pennsylvania to save the stranded. Meanwhile, these New York residents were carried to safety on a bulldozer. The problem is, like, we have no way of dealing with issues like this because the enemy is invisible. Like, the enemy oftentimes is ourselves, right? So we have no way of dealing with this. We can't shoot at it. We can't drone strike it. We can't bomb it. So we have no way of dealing with it. That's like, we're coming closer and closer to the reality that I've envisioned in the past, like in, an, in a truly just system uh, that uh, in, a, in a society that cares about its people, we would literally completely flip the military into what it is, is a jobs program uh, exclusively revolving around murdering and destabilizing entire regions. And then creating an environment ripe for extracting uh, natural resources and, you know, uh, and, and creating a never ending cycle of violence that only ch seeks to feed the military industrial complex. And, you know, you get a little bit of a trickle down if you're upper, upper middle class enough to be able to buy some Raytheon stock and then think you're like actually doing something. Um, flipping that entire system on its head and using the military jobs program to like rebuild, you know? construction, recovery, relief, going to be a necessity, but we don't know how to do it. Like, we just don't know. We don't know how to fucking deal with invisible enemies. We don't know how to deal with COVID. We don't know how to deal with fucking hurricanes. We don't know how to deal with flooding. We don't know how to deal with the uh, drastic, disastrous impacts of climate change that we ourselves have caused. And that's the unfortunate reality. That's why Boggy, we just Boggy. keep getting owned over and over and over again. A normal, sane country sees a problem and they seek to deal with it. Japan has a massive earthquake problem. What do they do? They fucking build in an effort to mitigate. They build buildings and focus a lot on R&D to ensure that their fucking buildings are wobbly, okay? I was worried about my ex-boyfriend that lived in the Wobbly enough that they don't NJ fucking, you know, uh, blow up uh, at the site of an earthquake. earlier this year. Sag. That's what you're supposed to do. Matt Bush Jr. escaped the water on the shoulders of a first responder. Because it's really deep and I'm cold. 
Ida tore through the region, leaving flooded neighborhoods, a submerged that. stadium, and rushing water strong enough to send this shipping container floating and pile cars on top of each other. We wasn't prepared for anything like this. This is Seven the worst months. I've ever seen it, even with sin. When Here's what it is, by the way. Keen yeah, Hampton. they're not prepared for this. This is the worst thing we've ever seen until next year. That's going to be the worst thing that they've ever seen. Okay? You know, right now, this is the worst thing we've ever seen, right? And it totally is. There's truth to that. Can't wait until, you know, next year, it's the worst that they've ever seen. Who could have seen this coming? Not the fucking scientists who have a, a gay communist agenda, obviously, that keep warning that, like, we are literally... We're, we're, at a, we're at a place with climate change, which I don't cover that much because it's such a fucking doomer, doomerism-inducing subject to talk about, especially with a younger audience. But, like... Scientists are literally like, we're fucked. Uh, there is, at this point, it's like, we have to start dealing oh, yeah. with, uh, 11 months. you know, the, the most disastrous consequences. We have to, like, start uh, retooling our infrastructure. I don't even know if we can actually prevent uh, further heating from occurring. Like, it's kind of over. And they've been saying that for, what? They've been saying that for 40 years, man. Yeah, and they're right. What the fuck do you mean? They're this literally right. Like Bruno. Unless you're the type of dude who's like, they've been saying that for 40 years, man. It didn't end. Like, you think, like, you think this shit ends with, like, one fucking, with one, like, uh, uh, meteor, meteor, uh, just falling onto the planet or something, like the dinosaurs? Even that took time. Since basement started flooding, he tried to drive to a friend's house to borrow a pump. You had to climb out a window? I climbed out the window because I knew if I opened the doors, all that water was, you know, getting in the vehicle. Is that scary? I was kind of nervous, so pass. I didn't know what to expect, you know, but thank God I'm safe, made it back safely, and now this is the aftermath of what we're going through. In places where water has receded, communities are left to dry out and pick up the pieces. Look at that tornado! Crews are cleaning up towns torn apart by tornadoes and fixing crumbled roads that swallowed up cars. Governor Phil Murphy toured the damage in New Jersey. This is going to take us some time to dig out of. There's no question about it. As the storm moved through the region, homes flooded, and the New York City subway system shut down after the onslaught of rain. Storm. Like we see all this shit, and and there's take still motherfuckers like, dude. Uh, actually, you're kind of a fucking douchebag for still consuming plastic straws. It's like, dude, we are literally like. Listen you got fucking cancer, so okay? You have cancer, like, past. ripping through your body. And you're mad at someone. Like, you're, you're, you're like, why can I not get a Band-Aid? Like, <laughs> why can I not get a Band-Aid for a fucking pimple I have in my face? Okay? No exploit speed run. That's what it feels like. Storms yeah, affect like all of us, but what we've got to recognize is the suddenness, the brutality of storms now it is different people across the region were caught off guard by the rare weather described as a once in 500 years event now all the more common because of climate change it's time for an oh god one of the bad takes no man it's not we need like full-blown full-blown systemic change to deal with this like that's what i'm saying tackling the issue through consumer side activism is so fucking stupid and so false not that like people shouldn't stop trying but it's such a foolhardy endeavor that only makes people feel like they're doing something positive and happy that it's not even an idea that was unique it was created by fucking oil lobbyists the oil and gas industry literally was like we should use the like the the uh, individualistic mindset that americans have against them to shift the attention away from like what our impact is on climate change which we know is real which we will avoid uh, uh you from like recognizing that it's fucking real and we will literally use it on you do both doing both impossible pepega no do both i want to know why entirely different approach because we're getting six Texas. cruise ships pollute the same amount as all the cars in europe combined oh my god dude don't get me fucking started okay Switching Let's finish this video, here. sorry. We have to make a change to protect the lives of the people of this city.
years. As the death toll continues to rise, those who made it to safety are especially grateful. I know we lost everything, materialistic, everything, you know, that you can just repair, you know, but family you can't bring back. Well, there's still a lot of streets, parking lots, driveways like this one used to be a driveway uh, that are still underwater. It could take some time for a lot of this standing water to recede. And only then, Gail, can these communities begin to assess the damage. I know those. So how to escape from your we car so many trapped in floodwaters. I mean, I don't want to I, I don't want to cover all kids. this stuff, but um, this morning. Joe Biden talked about the abortion law, which we're going to get to in a second. But the last thing I want to tie to this, too, is like at a time when this shit's popping off, when Climate change is directly responsible yes, for the erratic that. weather conditions, the extreme weather conditions that are oftentimes cataclysmic that happen once like every once in a fucking lifetime, pretty much happening so regularly now. Um, the fact that we don't have a comprehensive, full-blown, systemic way of tackling these issues and also trying to mitigate rather than even prevent because like prevention is, is GG's. Like I, I, I do truly believe that we don't really have a way to prevent this. Uh, I, I don't. I, I think we're far too gone. But as far as like mitigation goes, like we need money to, to solve these issues. We need money to make sure that there are uh, better flood prevention measures in areas that previously were not considered to be flood zones. For example, okay? We need better infrastructure. As I showed you, the roads are fucking crumbling. And we need, more than ever perhaps, people like uh, Joe Manchin to shut the fuck up. We need him to shut the fuck up. But instead, at a time when, like, you know, the Afghan withdrawal is, like, dying down in the news and people aren't caring about, people aren't, like, fake caring about the Afghan women anymore. And we've moved on to, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, the animal sanctuaries that were in Afghanistan and stuff like that. Or, like, the inanimate objects that we left behind that, oh, my God, what about those MRAPs that are fucking dog water? When we've moved to that position now, uh, you know, and, and uh, climate change and its worst fucking uh, consequences are being experienced by the uh, Pacific Northwest in the form of uh, nonstop wildfires with wildfire seasons uh, prolonging or are getting longer. Uh, and then also in the Northeast and uh, in just the East Coast in general, hurricanes are causing massive amounts of flooding. Joe Manchin was like, I need to be in the news. I don't know why people aren't talking about me. Joe Manchin, who famously was outed by an Exxon lobbyist for just being the fucking dog of the Exxon uh, lobbyist. Joe Manchin was also outed for uh, being the main guy that talks to the billionaires and tells them, like, I will be the disruptive force in Congress if you need me to. Um, so that Joe Manchin wrote an op-ed, okay? He wrote a fucking op-ed, uh, Titled, literally, as like all of those horrific images that I was showing you, okay? At that time, Joe Manchin was like busy typing away, dude. Why I won't support spending another $3.5 amid inflation, debt, and the inevitability of future crises. Congress needs to take strategic pause. That's incredible, dude. Now, the irony, of course, is that like, I, I do believe it. I do believe that he's going to vote for this bill. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think that, like, I do believe that he will inevitably vote for this. He's just, like, doing the Joe Manchin thing. But it's just, like, the fact that... Also, it's not just Manchin. It's 10 other centrist Dems and supporters of the filibuster. Yeah, I, I know. I know that, like... Here's one thing I need to mention, okay? You can threaten committee positions and things like that. You can, you can always pressure politicians. Like, it's not impossible. Just because Joe Manchin is a Democrat in a plus 35 red state does not change the reality that like, you know, uh, that, that these people are susceptible to outside pressure or rather internal pressure from the party. Joe Manchin loses all of his fucking clout and brownie points and, and, uh, and reasons for being a politician if he is no longer a Democrat. A part of this argument that we consistently forget is that like he needs to be the Democrat in the room that everyone talks about. If he was a Republican, he'd just be like any other fucking Republican. All of a sudden, he's no longer getting the same amount of benefactors. That would cut into his, uh, that would cut into his money pool. So this threat that he would like, uh, you know, turn heel and become a Republican, I think it's fucking bullshit. 
I don't believe he would do that. Because it's in his best interest to maintain the uh, I'm the centrist Democrat position. Centrist Republicans don't get the same level of clout that centrist Democrats do. So that's my take on it. Friday, fun fact, Joe Manchin, one proposed repurposing Afghanistan war money for USA infrastructure years and years ago. Well, at the time, that was a bold... He could never win a GOP primary either. Yeah, that's the other thing, but I don't even know if he wants to run again, to be honest. So that's the other, that's the other issue. That's the other, uh, scary thing. You know what I mean? All these daily streams, whether big or whether small. So there he is again, the sun is streaming. The sun is streaming. You wait.